you I'm doing good. Thanks. Good to see you. How many people have been to a wait, wait session before? We've done these quite a bit. Is this the sixth one, Josh? It feels like <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be thrown. Second one that counts. So let's do how many people listen to Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me on NPR? Okay. This is that show, minus Peter Siegel, <laughs> minus Paula Poundstone. But it's, and it's all about security questions. And we have three people who profess to be experts up here on the panel. Where? <laughs> Panelist number one, please introduce yourself on the mic. Hey, I'm Jacob West. I'm Chief Security, or uh, excuse me, Chief Architect for Security Products at NetSuite. Well, you're missing something there, too. At the RSA conference, what I happened? To, I was told not to belabor the point, but I am also the reigning world champion at Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me. Give him a hand. That's true. It's true. Thank you. Josh. I'm Josh Foreman. I'm the Chief Technology Officer for Summit Site, but I'm also the, the, one of the founders of uh, Rugged Software and like DevOps, and I am the cavalry focused on uh, public safety and design. Hi, I'm Shannon Leeds. I work for Intuit. I'm the um, DevSecOps leader and uh, senior manager of cloud security engineering and completely new to this. I was just going to say, Shannon is a wait, wait virgin, so go easy on her here during the session. <laughs> 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 and they didn't study. I did give a hint today. Did anybody see one of the hints on Twitter today? All I right. Did. You did. All right, good. Let's see what we got. How many people are doing Twitter? Uh, is anybody doing Twitter from here? The hashtag I'm using is uh, don't pwn me. It's the hashtag, so I can track what you're saying there. And if you want to follow me and the other shows that I'm doing like this, you can follow at TSWAlliance.com. I'm Mark Miller. I run the OWASP podcast series. How many people listen to the podcast? Everybody, please raise your hand. I've had over 100,000 listens this year. It's been kind of cool. And I did record... Uh, all of the project leaders that were here this time talking about their projects, so that will go up too. So here's the rules for wait, wait. The first thing is every correct answer is three points. I need somebody either with a computer or with a notebook to want to be a scorekeeper, and you get a big prize if you're a scorekeeper. Who wants to be a scorekeeper? And I mean it's a serious prize. You went up first. You got it. You got it? What's your name? Nikolai. Nikolai. I'll be calling on you a lot. Uh, you're going to hear Josh bitch a lot, just ignore him, okay? <laughs> a wrong answer, Nikolai, is you got to take two points away, all right? And a pass on a question, um, he, he loses one point, and the question goes to the audience, and you guys get three points for the right answer, and you can give it to any of the panelists that you like to up here. Now, the way that worked when we did this in the Cambridge and UK, Matt Tassaro, who's not here, he's in another session right now, got zero questions right, but I think he won because he got the sympathy vote from the audience. That's how powerful it can be. All right, a correct answer from, you're going to get two points. Now, here's the cool part about it. I can arbitrarily take and give away points at any time. And you can take it from Josh and from Jacob that that will happen in the next three minutes. <laughs> hey, Tom. All right, now. Here's the online news sources that these guys haven't read, but here's the four I'm pulling from today. These are the ones I'm going to talk about. Excellent. I actually did talk to Kim Zetter from Wired. We, we pinged back and forth, and she said she was willing to crib my questions for me from her Wired articles. So this should be pretty cool. So the first thing is Swift on security. How many people are following Swift on security? Hell yeah. This Swift, right? So here's the first question that goes to the reigning champion. He's going to need that. And the first question is, how does OX10 connect to the internet? Taylor Swift actually had this on there. I'm thinking that you're going to pass because we're going to start moving. Do you, did you read this one? Pass. Passed. Anybody want to take it? 
audience? Did anybody get this one? I thought it was going to be an easy one to start with. It's, it's through the uncertainty principle. <laughs> All right, now you see how the game is played, right? I told you they weren't experts to start, right? Second question for Josh. Cyber war doesn't determine who's right. What does determine what's right? Well, Taylor had a good discussion with her friend Bertrand Russell and came out with who's left. We got a winner here, folks. Three points. All right. Good. Next one. Shannon, if Linux is about choice, how come it never lets me run what? Go to the audience. Use a lifeline. <laughs> you guys didn't study either. Windows? Windows. Windows. You know what? I'll take that as a correct answer. Internet Explorer. Oh. Uh, <laughs> all right. Who are you going to give your points to? Who said that? Who are you going to give them to? All right. And because you were the first one to speak up, you get a unicorn t shirt. I told you prizes are coming out here. All right, here we go here. Next one goes down to the uh, Taylor Swift. Jacob, it is, oh, it's about choice. And then John uh, McAfee jumped in there and he said, well, maybe Linus and Bill had a falling out and they're never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of McAfee. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> During my first hundred days in office, I will ask Congress to replace the phrase, in God we trust, with... Pass. Really? Anybody on the panel want it? Audience? Please. Who are you going to take three points away from? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that wasn't correct. Not correct. Ooh, please. Heck the planet. There he goes right there. <laughs> Who are you going to give the points to? What? You're sucking up to him. All right. All right. There we go. So hack the planet. Support for my hack the planet platform has been so strong that I'm proposing we change the pledge from under God to with. <laughs> Anybody else? It's very close to what somebody said over here. Under crash override. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to have to slow down. I thought this was going to be an easy session with you guys that had done this before. All right, now, what makes McAfee giggle like a 12 year old? Shannon, that's you. <laughs> Oh, that's incorrect. <laughs> All right, negative three. Twelve-year-old said. <laughs> but he says, uh, it's a hint, Shannon. It's a type of security test. Penetration testing. <laughs> that's a groan. That's a groan. All right. All right. Next one. Who has John McAfee asked to be his running mate? It's your turn, Jacob. <laughs> They're never, ever, ever getting back together. <laughs> and your guess is? Josh gets two points for Swift on security. That actually is a running dialogue between McAfee and Swift on security. There. So. All right. Here's strange but true. This is the next session. The next section. You ready? Well, we already did John McAfee's section, so I don't know where else we can go from there, so we're going to bypass this section. Oh, that's the biggest joke I've got today, so. <laughs> Thank you. Who was clapping? You get a shirt. <laughs>
All right. And while you're getting a shirt, I mean, he actually is running for president. Yes, he is. Party. And he did say something interesting. He said when, when elected officials say that they have a staffer who covers cyber, he said they, it's like saying they have a staffer who covers the English language. And until they're literate on modern technology, they're not going to be able to do their job. So I thought that was interesting. Now, Josh is talking like that because in previous iterations of this game, he got points for talking outside the box. <laughs> <laughs> So he does get, Nikolai gets an extra point for that one. You guys add something to the dialogue, please? All right. These are with Kim. How many people read Kim on, on Wired? She gave an incredible session on Stuxnet at RSA. If you ever get a chance to hear her speak, it's remarkable. So I'm going to go with you, Jacob. Oh, Josh, you ready? A vulnerability discovered in a popular remote management system used by thousands of businesses to manage employee mobile phones would allow an attacker to what? Of the many things it could do uh, with the SAP mobile phone app, it could wipe it. Yeah, three points. What else can it do with it? Just about anything it wants, basically, right? So in this case, if you read this article, what it's got is you can wipe it, you can get the activity log, you can determine location, and this is ubiquitous on those, this right? This story has to be a lie, though, because SAP is part of the Oracle family, and from what I hear from Aaron Davidson, Oracle doesn't have any bugs. They are on They're going on break of that. You want to give him a point? Uh, give him a point for that one. I thought it was a chuckle. Shannon, you got to jump in here. I know it's your first. Here we go. Hi, I'm <laughs> <laughs> so he set me up. All right. So the Hacksaw Lexicon article, a guide to ransomware. Keep that in mind. How much is estimated to be extorted from ransomware victims each year? Five million. How do you know that? He told me. Okay. <laughs> Three points. It actually is. Everybody know what ransomware is? And it's getting worse and worse. That's what the article is about. If you want to check that out. That, that was actually when we were studying. He told me. For those of you that want to play this game in your chapters or projects, I'm going to give you a link so that you can download the deck immediately. So I don't want to give it to you now because half of you here would cheat. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to do this at my, my group's stuff. Oh, great. That's why I'm actually, I've been asked to start an OWASP project that puts the decks up there so the chapters can actually use them. Okay. This is yours, Jacob. It's at least five million. I, from my estimate, I think it's much, much larger. I was saying yeah. I believe it was only five million. Yeah. yeah. How can you find out if the NSA or the GCHQ has spied on you? So thanks to a lawsuit uh, that was filed and, and resolved in the UK, you can now petition to, uh, to have another organization there search the, the, the database and find everything related to you and provide it to you. I actually did the research on this and wanted to make the request because I'm really curious, but uh, there's some forms to fill out. But uh, I'll let you know the next time we do this how it works out. Okay. Three points for Jacob. Shannon's, Shannon's going after him. You can only do it until December. December 5th. Yes, that's a, that was actually an extension of the question. But you can't give yourself points. I'll, I'll take it. You give me the <laughs> Oh, that's fair. So since you did the research, Everybody on Ashley Madison has been looking at this thing. <laughs> Maybe if you have to look, you should already be in there. <laughs> Josh, in what year did a Russian spy gang start hijacking satellite links? One of the truths is according to the article. According to the article. That's all I've got. All of the years? Uh, no, what year did it start? Crowdsource of year, please. 2007. Who said it? That's correct. Who said it? I can't give you another shirt. <laughs> Who's going to get the points, David? Who are you going to give them to? Uh, 
David, would you give somebody else your shirt and I'll give you an OWASP branded shirt? <laughs> Holy moly. All right. Anyway, good. 2007. Josh, you had something to explain there, right? You said a different year? No, it's just um, Jericho from Christian.org and I did a talk destructing cyber war because while there's lots of talk about industrial control facilities, power plants being hacked, um, more of them have been just uh, interrupted by squirrels and by hackers. What we did find in the research is like three dozen confirmed satellite hacks over the last 10 years um, that really did happen. So a lot of the fun and the hype in the media distracts from things that actually have been done. Let's see, hijacks. Good. Okay, Shannon, from the date the data from Ashley Madison was hacked, how many days was it before the CEO resigned? All right, I didn't tell. <laughs> Come on, who's got it? So from the day the data was posted, not from the hack, but when the data was posted and the public was aware of it, how, far, how long did it take for the CEO to resign? <laughs> you get a shirt for that one. Hold on. <laughs> that was you? There you go. Everybody going to pass? It was 10 days, actually. Yeah. There you go. And that's all the articles that Kim is right. She's actually been tracking this pretty heavily. So some in-depth articles going on there. 10 days. It took him 10 days to resign. For a bonus point, nah, let's say bonus three points. How many days did it take the CEO of Volkswagen to resign? <laughs> Volkswagen, the, the emissions, yeah. From when it became public, how many days did it take? What day do you say it became public? Saturday was when he talked about it publicly. Okay, let's use Saturday. Jacob, you sound like you're on top of this one. Five days, yeah. We're doing math up here. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was scary. What do, you, what do you guys think about the Volkswagen thing? I mean, you're all over the car stuff, but this is way outside of the norm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The reason people sought out these cars was this feature, and it wasn't like they sent a different model to be tested or something that an individual or a small group could control. This was systematically part of the way they wrote the software system on the car. Um, that's, that's just horrible. And it had to involve an awful lot of people knowing about it. Do you ever need you know, even more reason to not like the digital mind copyright act or the product use act or to discourage third party researchers from buying things? Um, Things like that help to hide for long periods of time dishonest practices. So it's absolutely fraud. It does go to the core reason people buy that car, back to the environment. And uh, I, I don't know, I think it's going to hurt them a lot more than people realize. You know, I wish I had the pictures side by side, but it's almost like the guy that was running FIFA and this guy were separated at birth when you put the pictures next to each other. Be fascinating. Yeah. Like Volkswagen, the corporate international giant. The second most imported brand in the United States. Yeah. All right, this is bluff the audience. I need two volunteers. Oh, everybody sat back really quick. Please. <laughs> I haven't talked to you yet. Come on up here. What's your name? Brian. Brian. Shannon is going to be your hostess on this one, and she's going to read this one for you. Shannon? Two 10 year old girls in Stratford, Washington did what as part of a science project? Did they? Built a homemade clock and took it to school. 
fuses to weather balloon to launch R2D2 Lego into space. Hacked into local Ticketmaster computer. Brian? The weather balloon? The weather balloon. Thank you. Thank you. Give him a hand. It takes something to get up here. Yes. So I know you'll take the shirt. Thank you. There you go. That's a pretty good one. Did you guys read about that one? Two little girls. <laughs> they sent up a weather balloon that went up 78,000 feet, and they put a little R2-D2 on there. That's what this thing is right here They're with a picture of their cat in R2-D2. And attach it to the weather balloon. Well, what happened is the balloon actually exploded. Because of, but the GoPro came down, and they got the GoPro back. And it was actually 50 miles from the starting point, and they actually tracked it down out in the desert and got it back. It's an amazing story. You want to read that one. When you download uh, the deck here, I've got a link in each of the note sections that points you directly to the article, so you won't have to hunt around for them. Okay, next volunteer. You see, it's not bad. Who's going to come up? I got somebody in the back. Come on up. I know you. How are you? And you are? Krishna. Krishna. Good. Uh, Jacob, I'm going to get you to read this one for Krishna. Come up here and see. There we go. Go ahead. The kid that was arrested for bringing a homemade clock to school in Texas was wearing what kind of T-shirt when he was busted? Half the planet? Eat more bacon? Make it fair 2015. Make it fair. How many know the answer? NASA. I was bluffing. The, it's called bluff the listener, right? <laughs> Here you go. You get a prize anyway. Here you go. Thanks. Thanks. Who came up with that in the back? Who, to, who, who came up with the answer? Good. Come on up here. I'm not going to run to the back. I got something for you up here. How about an OWASP app sensor guide? You okay? Seriously, I got a bunch of more stuff. He'll take a shirt. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the app sensor guys you said that. <laughs> All right. Okay, bluff the audience. I need one more, please. Who wants to take the Kardashian question? Come on, I need one more volunteer. Please, come on up. Quick. Go ahead and read this. Go ahead, guys. And you are? Right. Evan. Evan. released a new app last month. What does the app do? It allows subscribers to track the cisterns in real time. Auto shoot selfies every 15 minutes. <laughs> it serves a unique smiley face when you email. Auto shoot selfies every 15 minutes. Auto shoot. You know what? I don't know, and I don't really fuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You got no wasp shirt already? How about a no wasp bag? All right, good. I got to do more like that, I guess, huh? <laughs> All right. Krebs on security. How many people know Brian? He follow Brian? Okay, good. Whose is it? Okay. What's the name of the team who uh, claims they hacked Ashley Madison? Well, Josh is thinking this article is worth reading because Brian actually goes in and tracks down through a historical Twitter stream the person that he thinks actually did it and exposes them on here. But the question here is what team claimed to do it? Okay. We have an audience answer up here, I think. Hold on. Impact. Impact team. Who are you gonna give your points to who? Uh, Josh. What? <laughs> so the next time you've got an answer, I won't be pointing it out. <laughs> <laughs> you got one already? All right. Um sure. I've got an app sensor guide and a CISO briefing if you want one of those. Which one? 
thought you said sure. <laughs> there we go. You're welcome. And you can thank the people at the uh, OWASP store for those. They donated all this stuff to go out. Except for the little bubble gums that came from me at Sonatype. And you're supposed to use those every time they get a, a wrong answer. You're supposed to fill the air with bubbles, but this room would be floating by now. So I'm <laughs> All right. Shannon, what does the Lizard Squad attack tool do? <laughs> really? I did. All right. All right. Any help? Excuse David, me? David's probably got this one. I thought it was the DOS tool. Okay. We're going to take away points. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I've never had anybody in this game go negative before. It's going to be interesting. <laughs> All right, can anybody help her at all? You guys. Taking down sites. Yay. It's an, uh, no, it's an online tool where you go in and say, I want this site down, and boom, it takes it down for eight hours. Who are you going to give your points to? Give it to my fellow Shannon. Shannon gets three points on that one, Nikolai. Uh. <laughs> Absence or guide or bubbles? You want the CISO or the, the guide? I'll, yeah, I'll give you both. <laughs> Please take both. <laughs> okay. All right. This is an easy one because you, this is an easy one, right? What internal security technique was used to stop attackers from gaining access to all target cache registers once they were inside the system? Well, the story Target likes to tell is that all of the, that information was in their SIM. So if a SIM was used, uh, I would say nothing in practice does since no one ever looked at the SIM to find out that the data was there. <laughs> and Jacob gets three points for the word nothing. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Yeah, yeah. Any comments on this attack? Because this report just came out. I mean, obviously the breach was two years ago. But. I mean, uh, maybe it's in your follow up question, so I shouldn't say it, but the reason this is really important is courts just approved the uh, a suit, a lawsuit from the banks against Target. So That's right. that combined with this is not, not what we need. I'll tell you the interesting one for me with this kind of stuff is watching the stock prices. I think right now is a wonderful time to buy into Volkswagen. And I'm being serious about that, if you're an investor. I totally agree with you, but not this one. They're not at the floor yet. Well, I'm not trying to time the bottom. They've already gone down 30%. Yeah, but they have difficulty selling to the U.S. market in the future. Yeah, but they're going to All right. How many people would buy Volkswagen at a 30% discount? Whoa. How many people definitely would not buy it? That's about an even one. You know what's funny on that? The same hands went up both times. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Audience limerick challenge. This is Josh's favorite. Here. All right. I need two audience members, and I'm out of prizes, so there's nothing I can do. <laughs> Come on. You volunteer earlier. You were, you were volunteering earlier. You want in? Yes, sir. Come on up. Your name is? Carl. Carl. Josh? If I recall, these don't always exactly rhyme. Yes, they do. <laughs> okay. You're just not doing it right. <laughs> there you go, Josh. Okay. When I think of something so thrilling, as in concepts that work well worth its thrilling, I talk to my minions who have strong opinions of InfoSec so on. Fulfilling? Unfulfilling is correct. InfoSec is very unfulfilling. <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles, or you got them? All right, good. That was a pretty good one, right? All right, now you see the limericks. Who wants the next one? Come on, I need one more volunteer. You. Yeah, come on up. Yeah. Your name? Alex. Alex. All right, Shannon, give Alex this one. Done, and he's basically won with a $40,000 fine for none. 
Petraris, right behind you. The guy got it behind you. Uh, he says it doesn't rhyme, Josh. It doesn't rhyme. What? It's not how Wow. Fake question. All right, all right. But, and the reason I brought that one up uh, again is something happened in the last week. Petraris is back, just like Brian Williams on the talk shows. <laughs> all right. Final round. I have three final questions. Nikolai, can you give us a, a score count? Okay, so the final questions are worth 15 points each. <laughs> I told you it was arbitrary. I, okay. <laughs> okay, you ready? The correct answer is 15. And the correct answer is still? Zero. Oh, it's just zero. No yeah. downside. No downside to losing this one. <laughs> Tell me when you're ready. Take a breath. Just one question each. One question each. That's it. All right. Selfies are killing more people than shark attacks. How much more? You know, you read the article, but you didn't read the correct article. I think I'm going to give him seven points for this because was, he actually did study and come up with the article. But what you've got here is there's, in Russia now, there's dozens, literally dozens. Oh. Now, I want to read a couple to you here. Two Russian men were killed while taking a selfie with a hand grenade. <laughs> <laughs> All right, a couple other ones. Uh, a Russian teenager was electrocuted when she was taking a selfie on top of a train and touched the high voltage wire on the train. There's a, a train theme among the <laughs> uh, This one is weird to me. A teenager in Houston, Texas fatally shot himself while taking a selfie with a gun. Was he taking the selfie with the gun? I, uh, it's the journalism that gets me here. Oh, seven points for Jacob on that. <laughs> All right. All right. Shannon, you ready? I did. Okay, Secret Service agent pleads guilty in the Silk Road case. How much money did he steal and what currency was it? Thousand. We have a winner. Yay! <laughs> yeah. Actually, this is just one of the guys. Did you read the article about how they tracked down the Silk Road? The guy that they actually featured in that article after the article got busted for doing this kind of stuff. It's fascinating. Nikolai, I need a final before we get Jacob. Here. How much points should you get? Sixteen you get? points too. I, I give you ten for that. So what do we got? I think Jacob's still winning. No, Jacob hasn't answered yet. Jacob has 16. Shannon has 17. Josh has 23. This is the deal breaker right here. It's his turn. If he gets it right, we're done. This is what happened last time. Nice and slow right over the way. Wait, can you find points somehow? I throw you a big meatball right here. Lock pickers, 3D printing, TSA master luggage. How did they do it? With a 3D printer? 
No, 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 no. Don't give him. Don't clap for that. No, no, no. He's not done yet. I'm not done with him yet. I should say. <laughs> How did they get the plan? They actually, the TSA was in some of their promo materials, took a picture of one of the master locks, no, no, keys. All of the, master keys. the three of the master keys, and all they did is they took it from the picture and recreated it as a 3D plan. I, I, still, I still want my 15 for answering this correctly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we had this conversation last time, too. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we need, we need to know how many points does Jacob deserve by, by having such a smart ass answer? 47. <laughs> seven. I think seven's a good round number. So, Nikolai, we're looking for a final score here. Oh, we need a question here. What is, <laughs> you know what, we're going to have to do this online. So we're going to post something on Twitter for the two of these guys. <laughs> and so, yeah, we'll get closure. We're going to do a, a Twitter off. So now here it is. Thanks to the panel, by the way. Please say thank you. This is not easy to do, not easy to do. Um, this is our, uh, I think, seventh time. We've done this at Black Hat, at RSA. We've done it in Europe. It's been fun. So if you want a copy of these slides, how many people would like a copy? All you have to do is send me an email right there, and it's an auto-response with the deck and, and other resources for you. There you go. What, do you, what did you get wrong? What? Is he arguing now? He's trying to argue right. because he wants to see the range So... Thank you guys for coming. I hope you got something out of the, the purpose of the show is really to raise the awareness. There's a lot of stupid crap going on and it seems to be doing its job. So thank you for coming. Please get the deck. Use it at your chapter meetings. Pass it around. I appreciate it. Thank you.